No, and he's still learning. You yes. Know? So even though like, a lot of the values that he, he has are already installed unconsciously in his mind, he will still learn and he will still learn as he goes through. Um, and different elements or environments will have different impacts on potentially the way he goes forward. So for people who don't know what NLP is, could you just give a, like a brief overview of what, that, of what NLP does and what it stands for? Yeah, so NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming. And really it's talking about how, um, how we can talk to our unconscious, unconscious mind. Mm. So unconsciously, our mind and brain, brain links to our body and it'll tell you to hold a cup of coffee or to talk or to walk or to do things which we just don't even think about. Mm. Unconsciously, your mind is working then with the body to do that. And it's then how we can use that sort of process to then, if there is something which you have a like limiting belief or a thought process which you want to change, how we can do that. Mm. And this is where the NLP will come into that. It's, it's looking at those maybe limiting beliefs or self-doubts or what's stopping you from going and achieving something that you want to achieve. And it's how you, what language you use and the thought process behind that and the beliefs. And most of the beliefs that we have or the values that we have are in um, installed in our, in our mind before the age of seven. Wow, okay. So then you have different areas and got seven, say 14, you know, you get your values from your peers and 21 where you might get them from maybe a pop star or something like that. And then, you know, it goes into various stages. Yeah. Um, and yes, you can change your values, but then it's depending on are those are the right values for what you want to achieve. So it's, it's understanding all around the sort of the unconscious mind, which is how we can um, amend that to, to fit our what we want to do. It's really interesting that you said the uh, the age because that sparked something with a video that I saw a while back and it was to do I can't remember the person's name but he was a professor and he was giving his speech to an audience and one of the things that he said is that parents need to stop worrying about micromanaging and controlling their children because mm. he said once they get to the age of eight they're pretty much on their way yeah and he said the best thing that you can do is just make sure that they're in the right environment that's right so it's really interesting because as soon as you said that i was just like someone else have said it i know yeah. it's true <laughs> <laughs> and it's it was one of the things that i worry about with my own child because my child has turned eight and he's, he's going to be nine now um yeah. next week mm -hmm. and it's scary in one sense because he's already on the track to be the person he's going to be. Uh -huh. And the best thing that I can do is just nurture that forward, make sure he's in the right environment. But trying to change him now wouldn't be the right thing for no. me to do. No, and he's still learning. You yes. Know? So even though like, a lot of the values that he, he has are already installed unconsciously in his mind, he will still learn and he will still learn as he goes through. Um, and different elements or environments will have different impacts on potentially the way he goes forward. So with that in mind then, given that a lot of the stuff is set by the time that we get to the age of seven, a lot, is a lot of that like with stress, anxiety and fear, is that all down to trauma that perhaps the child has experienced up until that age and then it manifests and it just grows with them as time goes on? So. They might it might be something silly, um, but as they get older, it it, it 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 goes into procrastination because of the fear of never being good enough to do something, so they procrastinate, so they never have to to complete it. And the triggers, so there will be triggers, mm. so certain triggers and something it may not be trauma, but it could be something that happened in 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 your childhood, um, and your your memory will link certain events together. And as they link in the events together, the first event then potentially will be um, before your age of seven. So certain things then potentially might happen then during the during the life, um, sort of lifespan of, of that person. And as the memory links it together, then the trigger then will go back to that first memory. Mm. So it could be that first memory. And it may say it may not be trauma. It might be just something which happened, you know, in the childhood or um, could be in school. Um, but that then may have a restricting impact on that person to what you know that person might do later on in life and it's really weird because 
as parents, we always assume that it's trauma that is the way that the person is, but it could be something so inconsequential yeah. that as a parent, you would never notice. Or it may have been somewhere in school, or you may not even know about it. So, so yes, it doesn't necessarily have to be a trauma. Um, sorry, sometimes my mind goes off <laughs> and starts thinking, and then I gotta like try and ring myself back <laughs> in. But I'm just thinking about my own child and some of the things that the mannerisms and the things that he does because it's there's certain things that he'll do yeah. that I know that I've never instilled in him to be so fearful of doing something. Like he's really scared of certain things and I'm just like, where's that come from? Because yeah. it's not something that I've instilled mm -hmm. and it's not something his mother's instilled. So no. it's really interesting because we will have conversations and I'm like, well, why is he doing this? Mm -hmm. And why is he, and it could be something in school yeah. that was, that we know, not even aware of. Not even aware of, it could be something on TV that he's watched. 